Good afternoon. Welcome to Midcap Radar. I'm Reema Tanduka. With me, Sonal Bhutra. And these are the top stories at 1.30 p.m. Stocks edge lower on expiry day. Midcaps fall less than large peers, even as all sectors trade in the red. Srinam Finance lights after new shares list post-merger. An additional 174 million shares have now been listed on the bosses. Pandana Spurti gains on a bad asset sale deal with an ARC, while Ashoka Bilkon perks up on order wins. HCC surges as its joint venture with Megha Engineering and Infra emerges as the lowest bidder to build the Bandra Kula complex station of the Mumbai Ahmedabad bullet train project. Security services provider SIS Limited gains after the management tells CNBC TV 18 that the deployment of private security personnel to supplement CISF at the Indian airports is a big long-term opportunity for the company in the wake of the recent chaos seen at the airport in Delhi. All right, those are the top headlines and a lot of stocks which are in focus. It's otherwise a weekday in trade and mid-caps, they are the ones which are underperforming uh, the benchmarks as well. So mid-cap index is down 7 tenths of a percent. There has been some recovery from the lows, but even that got sold into. So last one hour of trading action is going to be really volatile because it is the expiry day. But Reema, thinner news and we are still seeing a lot of uh, action in the markets. Okay, so let's straight away get to it, right? Because I think Vivek has a roundup of all the action in the broader markets. This is our segment, Midcap Movers. Vivek, what's on your list today? Well, that's right. And as you rightly pointed out, you know, today it's more uh, laggards rather than lose, uh, gainers. But still, you know, we managed to f highlight a couple of stocks uh, that are quite interesting. First on our list, uh, we have both Jindal Stainless as well as Jindal Stainless SR. Now, what we understand is that, you know, some special situation funds that had, uh, you know, bought both of these stocks ahead of... Uh, you know, the corporate action there have actually finished or completed their selling and which is why you're seeing a little bit of a bounce in today's trading session. Uh, moving on, you know, some of the stocks that are moving up on high volumes. Uh, this particular name, FACT, you know, this uh, fertilizer company has gained for all of the sessions in this week's trading. Uh, and this particular name has gained almost over 30, 35 percent in this week itself. Zuari Agro, you know, continues its up move. Inox Green, Suvain Life Sciences and Indostar all moving up today on very strong volumes. On the other hand, you know, coming to the list of laggards, mainly it's the NBFCs today that are seeing quite a bit of selling pressure. Sriram Finance, uh, as we highlighted, some supply pressure coming in. m and Fin as well as LNT Finance holding today losing. Also in the cement pack today, we are seeing a little bit of weakness. We understand that there has been some price cuts taken across the nation. So JK Cement and Sri Cement under pressure. India Pesticides after the strong up move earlier this week has seen a bit of profit booking. And Rane Petras today is down on strong volumes. Okay, all right, Vivek, thank you so much for joining us with those uh, stocks which are in focus today. It's time to welcome Rahul Sharma of Equity 99 Advisors for a technical check on the markets. Rahul, good afternoon. Does not look like a year end, right? There's so much happening in the markets today. Uh, what are you suggesting? What are the charts saying uh, since also it's the expiry? Yeah, right. Uh, good afternoon. See, I think uh, yeah, market and all of us are a bit in the vibe of new year coming. Uh, so, uh, like the participation is also like uh, uh, is, is, is slow down, I think. Uh, but uh, what we can see on charts, uh, especially Nifty and Bank Nifty, they are uh, trading in a range. Nifty particularly has got support at 18,000, which it is standing out really well. And on the upside, I think 18,200 will be the resistance for Nifty uh, for today as well as for tomorrow. And uh, Bank Nifty, I think this uh, Bank Nifty will uh, outperform. Uh, the market, uh, which has a good support line near 42,400 and upside resistance of 43,000. So I think uh, anything, any decline which we get on bank safety towards 42,400 should be bought. And uh, for the rest of the market, I think stock specific uh, like uh, focus should be there because stock specific action is quite visible for the market. Okay, uh, so let's talk about these uh, stock specific opportunities, right? Rahul, what are they? So, Reema, uh, uh, particularly uh, in the banking uh, segment, I think RBL Bank is standing at a good position of what we can see on the charts. Currently, it is trading at 174. And if you can see the daily charts, it, it, is, it has been rising and it has been uh, like uh, uh, showing us higher highs and lower lows. And in the recent sell-off also, this stock uh, didn't actually uh, uh, face any bigger correction. So, I think RBL Bank is something which I am uh, focusing right now. Uh, the target levels will be 190 and stop loss should be uh, kept at 167. I think this uh, shall really outperform uh, in, in today or in coming sessions. 
And second solution is Anant Raj, which is basically uh, Anant Raj Limited, which is having a construction background. Uh, the charts are telling us that it has, uh, like the recent sell-off has been bought. And right now it is uh, trading near its uh, uh, 89, uh, wait, uh, 89 days of waiting moving average. So this has the potential to go uh, upside really well. So the target levels for Anantraj Limited will be 120 and stop loss should be kept at 95. Right, Rahul, thank you so much for joining us and taking us through your technical picks. Have a great new year ahead. With that, we'll sip into a short break now. Up next, we'll be speaking with Surab Agrawal, who's the ED at Action Construction Equipment, to discuss the outlook for 2023. Welcome back. Well, India is in a large infra and industrial capex cycle in this context. As promised, let's invite Surab Agrawal, who is the Executive Director at Action Construction Equipment, to discuss the outlook for 2023 as we head into New Year and the demand prospects as well. Mr. Agrawal, good afternoon. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, you know, quarter two has been really strong for the company, record performance across the board as well. Can you give us a sense of whether quarter three has been as good as quarter two? Uh, what is the outlook for the second half of the year as well, considering the uh, demand scenario that we are in? Yeah, good afternoon. Yes, quarter two was pretty good for us. And I think we are going to improve in the current quarter. But even in terms of margin, which, which I think uh, are, are on the increase as of now. The demand scenario is pretty good. So, so going by that, I think uh, the second half, Quarter three and quarter four are, are, are going to be good. And uh, generally, if you look at our past trend also, uh, we do about 55, 60% of our business in the second half. So it appears that uh, we are on track as of now. Okay. Uh, so could you give us an indication of what the revenue guidance for this year will be? When we last chatted with you, you had indicated that the material handling agri-equipment revenue growth will be about 15%, construction equipment growth 35%, cranes 25%. Any changes to these numbers? Any improvement from when we last spoke? Yeah, I think uh, what you just said is what we are on track as of now. There is definitely a scope of improvement in these uh, percentages which you mentioned. And, and on the whole, as a company, we should definitely be growing by 25% in this year. It could be slightly more than that, that time. Hmm. Where is it that you see a, you know, a chance of a positive surprise? Uh, uh, our uh, crane segment as okay. well as our uh, construction equipment segment. Oh, okay. So uh, that seems to be on the roll as of now. Uh, hmm. Because activity all across manufacturing and even real estate has, has picked up uh, very well in the last uh, three, four months. Okay. So, Mr. Agrawal, has it led to a higher capacity utilization as well? In quarter two, you had mentioned, and earlier as well, that by end of FY23, utilization across uh, the segments will increase by 10 to 15%. What is it currently across your segments? See, if we talk of crane segment, uh, the capacity utilization has increased by 10 15%. It's touching about 75-80%. Okay. Similarly, in uh, construction equipment is increased by 10-15% and uh, metal handling as well. I agree about 5% increase is there. Mm. Okay, so the numbers would be around 70-75% uh, for cranes, around 70% yeah. for material handling, construction equipment as well around 40% and uh, I agree you are saying around 5%, so 45% would be the number here. I would say slightly better, maybe 75% on uh, cranes as well as metal handling. Okay. And about a 50-55% on construction equipment, about a 45-50%, 45% on equity. Okay, so is this the peak utilization level for this year? I think so, yes. And, and that will lead us into doing our, uh, you know, uh, maybe uh, our biggest quarter ever as well. Okay. You think Q3 could be your best ever quarter with record revenues? Yes, uh, in terms of revenue, in terms of, uh, let's say, overall profits. Okay. And then I'm sure we are looking at even a better Q4. And uh, Q4 should be better than Q3? Yeah, generally it is. Generally it is, okay. Can you talk a little bit about uh, the agri-equipment segment? Because there the revenue growth rate is tracking lower than the company average. Your margins in the prior quarter were also lower, just down I think about 2 odd percent in the September quarter. What's the outlook particularly for the agri-segment? See, on the whole year basis, uh, I think that we'll be able to grow about 15%. Yes. And then because of, uh, you know, uh, unexpected inflation and uh, rather uh, killing inflation, uh, margins also went right into the dogs. Mm -hmm. So hopefully we'll start to recover from this quarter onwards and then we'll build on that. And, 
you know, if I talk about FI24 again, I think we should be looking at 15-20% growth, if not more, here again. Okay. Uh, let's talk about um, your expansion plans. You were looking at an inorganic expansion, is what I believe. Uh, what is the hurdle here? Anything that you've finalized? What is the kitty for this acquisition that you're looking at? And the African expansion, uh, any update on that? See, uh, we were looking at three, four acquisitions, a couple of them smaller ones, which we have already executed in the last, I think, one or two quarters. But they are really smaller ones just to consolidate ourselves in the lower end of the market. Apart from that, uh, we were looking at backward integration and obviously uh, a similar player, much smaller than us. So, uh, uh, you know, things are uh, sort of moving on track, a little delayed here and there because one of those companies has actually gone into IBC, so it might take some more time. And, and on uh, our African front, uh, that project is very much on. We are waiting for uh, the letter of credits to come in from uh, Exim Bank of India. So hopefully execution should start uh, within quarter four and, and, and the full benefit of revenue should also trickle in uh, into, uh, let's say, FI24. Okay. So two-part question on the answers that you've given. First, what is the kitty of the acquisition that you're looking at? Will it be funded internally or will you have to go oh. ahead and take some debt? And the African expansion, which will fully uh, come on board, say, from FY24, what kind of uh, initial contribution will it see in the books? See, with respect to acquisitions, we do have a cash kitty of around 250 to 300 crores. And I think our uh, budget rate expenditure would not be more than 150 crores. So I think we are very comfortable there funding it internally. And with respect to money involved in the African project, uh, see, it is... Uh, Primarily, uh, there's going to be a mobilization advance, uh, so practically it will not hit our cash flow at all and, and uh, we'll be paid upfront or in advance. <clears throat> Could you give us an indication of how the order wins for the company oh. have been? That's not a number that you disclose, uh, but tell us the order wins in the December quarter, which is expected to be fantastic for you. Uh, how much better would it be compared to, say, six months ago, just to get an understanding of the CAPEX cycle and where we are currently? Yeah. See, quarter one uh, had become pretty slow because of the war and all inflationary pressure. Quarter two is generally slow for our industry uh, owing to rains and it starts to improve in September. So I can say that with respect to order booking and inflows, it's about 30 to 40 percent more as compared to quarter two, which, which started improving in September. And uh, going forward, uh, the way we are ending December, I think one of the strongest December with respect to uh, pending orders to be executed in January and February. FI23 order inflows versus FI24? F, uh, pardon me, please. FI23 order inflows, how would it compare with FI22 order inflows? How much better? Oh, well, I mean, it, uh, it's definitely much faster. I would say 25, 30 percent. 25, okay. So, last question before we let you go. Defense segment, that has also been contributing uh, fast to your kitty overall. Uh, what has it contributed so far? The last time that you had spoken to us, you said maybe 100 to 150 crore rupees. Will you be doing better than that? Because a lot of uh, orders or proposals have been floated by the government here. See, in the current year, I think it should be upwards of 100 crores. The overall execution may be close to 115, 120 crores by end of March. And uh, definitely next year, we'd, we'd be looking at uh, bettering it. And like you mentioned, uh, there's a lot of focus uh, from government. And recently, again, they've released about 85,000 crore budget for local procurement. So a lot of things uh, which were stuck have started moving. And uh, hopefully, uh, we should be getting good fresh orders, uh, which could be executed in the uh, next year. But adding here, apart from defense, uh, we had also uh, you know, been working very hard in the last two, three years on our export front. So uh, there again, uh, we've started seeing reasonable traction and, and we've also started exporting machines to countries like Brazil, Argentina and very recently we've added Turkey uh, in our list. So, so hopefully there again, uh, we are on track uh, to attain our 10 to 15 percent uh, you know, uh, revenue share coming from exports, which we should be able to do in the next two, three years. I remember the last time you told us that export revenue should cross 100 crores, I think, in FI23. Uh, that's what you had indicated. But thank you very much, uh, Sorab, for uh, joining in. And look at the way the stock has rallied on your comments. Uh, the management of action construction equipment saying that things are looking up. Q3 is likely to be the best ever quarter for them in terms of revenues and profits. And there is a possibility that Q4 could be looking up as well. Construction equipment, cranes, these businesses are tracking sort of without committing. He did indicate that there is a possibility that they will be able, could be able to beat uh, the guidance. So uh, positive statements coming in from action co uh, construction equipment. And they've also got 250 to 300 crores of cash on their books. Get into a break on the other side. Our special segment, Midcap Spotlight. And we'll be focusing on Canoria Chemicals.
Welcome back. Now, after Uzbekistan claimed that 18 children died in the country after consuming medicines manufactured by Noida-based Marion Biotech, government sources have told CNBC TV 18 that a second inspection at the drug maker's plant is underway. Parikshit is here with more details on this story. Parikshit. Well, yes, uh, we're now getting to know that on the 27th of December, the Central Drug Regulatory Authority and the UP Drug Regulatory Authority, they had sent teams to the Marin Biotech office to uh, inspect their uh, manufacturing facilities, study their records, their quality controls as well. Some samples have been collected. Now, those samples are being tested by a central lab. The... The, there is a second inspection which is on today at the Noida facility of Marion Biotech. Uh, again, more uh, records are being uh, studied and we believe that uh, after this inspection ends tonight or tomorrow morning, there could be some action from the UP authorities. We're getting to know that as per law, uh, the UP government could either suspend the license of this uh, pharma company or uh, suspend manufacturing over here. Uh, for the moment, they're looking at suspending production uh, of the particular cough syrup in question, but uh, if they do find lapses, they could suspend uh, production of all products of this facility altogether. But all of it, uh, like I said, will depend on what the inspection really reveals and what comes out of the report that the central government prepares after testing the samples that have been collected from Marin Biotech. Uh, this uh, company, we're told by the government, has been in operation since 2012 and uh, their records are now being studied very minutely before coming to any conclusion about further action. Okay, Pariksha, thank you so much for bringing us more details. We'll keep coming back to you as and when there are more updates on this. Let's in fact listen into what Hassan Harris, the legal head of Marin Biotech Pharma, had to say. Okay, this is a very, very unfortunate incident which has happened right now. Uh, you know, children's death linked to the you know Noida-based um, you know pharmaceutical company Marion Biotech. Uh, very, very unfortunate. But um, Sonal, such is our business that <laughs> from the story we have to talk about stocks. And you're yes. looking at Canoria Chemicals. Uh, yes. So that stock is in focus, up 20% in an otherwise weak market. That's because the company has reported to the exchanges that the commercial production of uh, their phenolic resin plant will commence in on 1st of Jan. Back in November, they had indicated that pilot manufacturing has started and now they can actually officially commence production here. The production will happen at their Ankleshwar plant with a capacity of 6,500 tons per annum. Uh, well, we don't talk about this company much, so let's uh, get going as to what the company really does. It is a commodity chemical manufacturer and manufactures chemical intermediates and apart from that it is also into another segment so three segments here alco chemicals which is 52 percent of their revenues solar power is very small and it also makes electronic automotive which automotives which is 47.7 percent so alco chemicals cater to pharma construction agrochemicals infrastructure and paints as their segments and products such as formaldehyde there's hexamine there is sodium formate acetaldehyde and phenolic raisins is what they make in their alco chemical segments so all of them are commodity chemicals pricing here keeps moving and that's why it's a cyclical business as well some of the concerns, yes, promoters have high holdings, 74.43%. However, 29.5% of this holding is uh, actually pledged by the promoters as well. In the first half, their losses expanded to 8 crores versus 3.3 crores on a YOI basis. Uh, they also have high borrowings in place, around 159 crore rupees, that is the short-term bor borrowing, and 341 crore rupees, that is the long-term borrowing. So yes, this news is uh, positive, taken positive at least. We don't know the revenue contribution that will come in from here. But yes, these are certain concerns as well that I wanted to put on board. Interesting. Thank you very much for that. Another one, Spandana Spurti is buzzing in trade up close to 5%. Abhishek is here to give us more details on what's aiding this rally. Uh, well, MFI continue to sell their stress loans to ARC we have seen in the recent past. So, Spandana Spurti has also sold uh, some of its stress assets uh, to an ARC worth about 323 crores. So, for this, they have uh, received about rupees 95 crore on an upfront basis. This is being done under Swiss challenger method and if you take a look, uh, this is one of the best rates that uh, they have got amongst peers as well who have recently sold their stress portfolio to ARCs. So, 
So Jana Small Finance Bank had sold uh, their stress to ARC. They received about 2.5% in August 2022. Recently, we had Bandhan's news of selling stress uh, pool to ARC. They received about 9% of the loans. And uh, Spanna Spurti, on the other hand, has received about 29.5% in terms of the uh, pools that they have sold down. So one of the good rates that they have got, and that is why the stock is seeing a massive gain in trade today. Back to you. Thank you very much uh, for that. By the way, right now as we speak, markets are also picking up from the day's low. The Nifty has recovered 82 points. That's close to about half four percent. Just pull up the intraday chart and you would see that pickup uh, coming through as, uh, you know, sort of the last one hour has progressed. Stocks which are aiding the recovery right now. State Bank of India has moved to the high point of the day. SBI is up. 1% a day for the year. It's been a rank outperformer in the banking space with an up move of nearly 32%. Indusin Bank in the financial space, giving it company and Axis Bank too, has had a steady intraday recovery. So that's on the financial pack. Outside of that, Bharti Airtel, that's a stock which is gaining on hopes that the company will list the Airtel Payments Bank. This is something the company has been talking about and the street perhaps is now valuing it. So Bharti Airtel has moved up to the uh, high point of the day, up move of nearly 1%. Hero Motor Corp, Enforces, Aisha Motors. These are a couple of the other stocks. In fact, IT has had a pretty okay week, right? Names like Wipro are up close to about 3% this week. Um, even Enforces has rallied a percent and a half. So IT, um, you know, this week has shown you pretty steady up moves. But this is the December expiry. So generally, the last one and a half hour could be a bit volatile. Stick it with CNBC TV 18. We're going to wrap on mid cap radar mutual fund corner when we return.